tell the, uh, the, the, the bread and the wine story. That's not a flattering story. I'm like, tell the bread and the wine story. You tell it. You're like the main character of that story. Yeah, but I was like blacked out. I've heard you tell it like a million times. Yeah, but that's because I, you know, I tell it like how I've heard you tell it because I've heard you tell it so many times. Do you really remember none of that, right? Yeah, it was like muddy. It was like there's mud in my brain. But no, I do. I do remember you crying. Oh, I wasn't crying. Yes, you I were, dude. Don't be a bitch about it now. Didn't you just say you didn't remember anything? Okay, so we were 14. You were 14. I was 21. Yeah, but we were both basically mentally 14 because we're so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, rents in the family. It sprints in the family. Uh, Amanda was already drinking. She'd come to my band's shows. This was my third band, Headless Hog. Headless Hog. And yeah. we'd play in warehouses. And Amanda was like this wasted 14-year-old following us around. It, it was bad. It was awesome. It's like the most glamorous 14-year-old me has ever been. But she only drank wine. Why do you gotta make it like that? Like, she only drank wine. It's part of the story. Okay, fair. So I only drank red wine. But, like, the cheapest wine imaginable. Box wine. Like, poison, basically. Do you want to tell the story, Todd? I don't want you to leave out details. Okay, so I was at a show with this guy. Wes. This guy, Wes. Wes the Creep. No, stop it. <laughs> Wes the Creep guy. And he was like, oh, why don't you eat some bread before you drink? Because then you won't get drunk. <laughs> And so I ate four sourdough rolls. I ate four. So stop laughing. To okay, I ate four sourdough rolls, and then I drank two whole bottles of wine, and then that's when it turns to mud. And then, say what happened? She vomited a blob. I did. It was like this congealed mess that was bright red, surrounded by the reddest vomit. Like I'm fucking possessed. And then Todd saw it, and he freaked out because I was like 14, not home, dying. And then that's. That's when you cried and you said, <laughs> say, say the thing. She threw up her appendix. I thought she was dead. We're a very stupid family. Don't you have any friends who could come by and help you with this? Just cleaning up or? It's hard to keep friends when you're worried that every time you go outside, a gust of wind will knock you down. I really need the house anymore. God, why don't you move back in with mom and dad? Maybe they could help you. I would just be a burden on them. What's wrong with you exactly? I have prerobulitis. Ah, uh, of course. And what is that? Who are you? I'm Dirk Gently. I'm a private detective. You don't look like a private detective. No private detective looks like a private detective. That's one of the first rules of private detection. Okay, but if no private detective looks like a private detective, then how does a private detective know what it is that he's supposed to not look like? It's a nerve disease causes your nerves to interpret certain inputs wrong and to fire at random when they get stimulus. So that means that water on your hand could feel like fire, your shoe on your foot could feel like it was crushing, breathing could feel like it was drowning. I'm sorry, that's terrible. That's so interesting. That oh, makes it hard to not be scared all the time. But Todd had it and he got better, so I just need to take my meds and eat healthy. So then why do you stay in the house? What? If the disease is in you, why does it matter where you go? Amanda, you want a jam? Yeah, of course. Cool, I'll go get stuff set up. 